One year ago, Gallup polling found record high optimism on how Americans see their personal finances. 59% of people at that time said they were better off than the previous year. Now, new polling reveals that optimism has plummeted. Now, just 35% of people say that they are better off than they were last year before the pandemic. So, Editor-in-Chief at Gallup, Mohamed Yunus, he joins us now to unpack more of that data. Mohamed, good to see you. Thanks for joining us, man. Great to be back. Um, really uh, depressing data to some degree yeah. to share. I think one of the really important things to keep in mind, like Crystal said, we were coming off a, a, a real high. Um, so 59% of Americans a year ago said they, they thought from a, a year forward that their financial situation would be better off. That dropped to 36. But it's important to keep in mind that when we look back to, for example, the Great Recession, um, there were a lot more people saying that things were going to be worse off in the future year. And we didn't necessarily see that this time around. So there's a lot of pessimism about the current moment. But there was still a pretty high level of optimism when we asked people about where they'd be next year. And 63 percent of Americans said that they felt they would be better off. Mm -hmm. Those uh, where we among whom we saw the most decline were among Republicans, which was not surprising. And I can explain why. But most concerning to me uh, and our team was really among younger adult Americans. So 18 to 34 year olds were among the most likely to have declined and said that their finances um, are definitely worse off uh, this year than they were last year. Hmm. Wow. And were they, did you also see a similar decline in the level of optimism around that age group? How are they feeling about their futures? That's a great question. We saw a, a little bit of more of the national story where people kind of see a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it's it's really interesting to compare this economic crisis with 2008 because we've been tracking um, these metrics through so many kind of economic moments. And unlike many of the metrics in 2008, it does seem that on the whole, people are more optimistic about kind of coming around the corner um, from this economic crisis. Obviously, in 2008, the floor kind of fell out from under the U.S. and global economy, and nobody really knew when it would stop um, or wh how it would really turn around. Obviously, optimism doesn't mean that's what's going to happen in the future. Um, we got to keep in mind that these numbers also come at a time when overall satisfaction in the United States is at a record low. 11% of Americans right now are satisfied with the way things are going in the United States. Um, right before COVID, 45% of Americans were satisfied. It's been 17 years, though, since we've seen over 50% of Americans satisfied with the way things are going in wow. the U.S. overall. So, Mohammed, you referenced why you can explain how Republicans feel worse. Is that because it's just a partisan reflection? I mean, go into that a little bit. Absolutely. So what we found in the past, um, I would say, uh, three administrations, if you will, is an increasing shift of a partisan view sort of skewing or partisan ID sort of skewing people's perception of how the economy is going. So if you are uh, identify as a Republican, there's a Republican in office, you're more likely to give the national economy uh, more positive assessments than vice versa. So seeing that decline among Republicans uh, is not surprising because the poll obviously from the 4th to 15th coincided um, with them coming to terms with the fact that President Biden was uh, going to be uh, inaugurated in a couple of days. That being said, though, um, when we ask about other aspects of public life, Republicans have a lot of resilience. If we ask about um, their satisfaction with the opportunity to work hard and get ahead in the country, 82% of Republicans and Republican leaners say that they're satisfied uh, with that um, uh, aspect of life in America. That's actually twice as much. 41% of Democrats say the same. So it's not like Republicans are totally, uh, you know, turning their backs on the economy and think it's all over. But there are important shifts happening. One of the other, uh, Sagar, I think you'd be really interested in this. Mm -hmm. One of the really important shifts among Republicans that we saw is when we ask about your satisfaction with the size and influence of major corporations um, in national life and government. In 2020, 57 percent of Republicans were satisfied with the role those corporations played. Today, 30 percent of Republicans, a drop of 26 percentage points, are satisfied. And wow. this is really interestingly coinciding, of course, with what's happening with Twitter and other social mm -hmm. media platforms and the Republican reaction to what they perceive as influencing um, freedom of speech and other facets of public life.
That's that really actually is really fascinating. Makes sense. Talk yeah. about the overall numbers. That, those were the Republican numbers. What do the overall numbers look like in terms of influence of corporations in American life? So overall, um, the, the overall quality of life, um, 84 percent, excuse me, let me start that again. The overall quality of life for the general population, 67 percent of Americans are satisfied. Um, the opportunity for a person to work hard and get ahead, 58 percent of Americans overall satisfied. Um, the size and power of the federal government, 31 percent. The size and influence of major corporations, which was your question, Crystal, is 26 percent are satisfied with the role they're playing currently wow. in 2021. <laughs> so you see wow. how the Republican and Democrat shift on that or d d uh, disparity, if you will, historically has is really now coming eye to eye, obviously mm -hmm. for totally different reasons. And it's fascinating to see whether the Republican Party really does start moving more in the direction of branding itself as small business versus anti big business, which would be a really big shift we would see in our lifetimes. Yeah, that's fascinating. Those numbers are like yeah. the core of what this show is about. The like <laughs> unity exactly right. of the anti corp <laughs> review. Yes. Um, Mahan, it's always great to have your insights on this. Thank you. Great talking to you, man. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Coming up, one of the key figures behind the $15 Seattle minimum wage is going to join us when Rising returns.